this video tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to create this inflated balloon text effect using Adobe Illustrator. Now to get started today, I'll get you to head over to defont.com and I want you to download and install this bubblegum font. It is a freebie and if you're in my class, I will give you access to it. But if you're watching online, then click on the link in the video description below to get access to this website. Now once you've got it installed, head on over to Illustrator. Make yourself a new file, and from the web templates, I want you to choose the minimum size here of 1024 by 768 pixels. Now, the next thing I'm going to get you to do before clicking create is change the raster effects. If you're on a new computer that is pretty quick, I want you to turn your raster effects up to high. So, another word for raster effects is resolution. If you want a high resolution artwork, then 300 pixels per inch is the standard that is used for when printing stuff out on paper. So if you want high quality print settings, use the 300 pixels per inch raster effect. If you're on a slightly slower computer, then maybe medium would be a good option at 150 pixels per inch. And if you're like me, you're on a slow dodgy computer, then you might want to stick with this screen setting at 72 pixels per inch, which is the setting you generally use when you're creating artworks that are going to be viewed online or on computer screens. And the reason we're playing with the resolution today is if you have a look at my example, have a close look around the outskirts of each letter. It's quite pixelated. And that's what it looks like at 72 pixels per inch. If you were to create this at 300 pixels per inch, which is the high resolution setting, it's going to be a lot cleaner, a lot crisper. Okay, so if you can, or if your computer can handle it, then turn that resolution up. Get it up to 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to have to stick with 72 today, but if you've got a good computer, then turn it up to one of those other two settings. Click on create when you're good to go, and you'll get your empty artboard on the screen. Now we are going to put a rectangle in, first of all, that fills the entire artboard. This is going to be our background. All I want you to do for that is go to your properties and turn the stroke off, if it's on, and then go to your gradient panel and put a gradient on this. If you can't see that gradient panel, just go to your window menu and select gradient. And I'm going to choose a linear gradient first of all, and turn that angle to 90 degrees. And then I just want to change the colors to a couple of light blue colors to make it look like we're in the sky. So the black over here, double click on the little black slider. At the moment it's in grayscale mode, so if you hit this little icon in the corner, change it to RGB, and choose a lightish blue. Um, that looks pretty good. And then down the other end of the slider, double click on that white um, little circle, change it to RGB mode again, and choose an even lighter blue. So play around with your settings there until you get it nice and light. That looks pretty good to me. So you should have something fairly similar to that. Light blue fading into an even lighter blue. Once you've got that, you can go to your layers panel and just lock that layer. Now the next thing we're going to do is put our text in that we're going to be using today. So grab your type tool, click on the page, and in capital letters I want you to write the word SUNNY. Now with my selection tool I'll just select that and go to my properties and make that a lot bigger. I'm going to go to about 200 for the size. And I'm going to change that character, or the font, sorry, to bubblegum. So there it is there. You can see what our font looks like now. Uh, I also want you to change the fill color of this font, so instead of having black, um, choose a bright color, a bit of a fun color that's going to stand out, so because I've got the word sunny there, I'm going to go with a bright yellow. So now it's time to put the um, balloon, or the inflated balloon text effect onto this font. So with it selected, go up to your effect menu, and I want you to go to 3D and materials, and we're going to choose the inflate option. Okay, so you can see here, this is the inflate option selected. And you can see that our font is starting to um, become 3D, I guess, and starting to look like it's a blown up balloon. At the moment, it's fairly low quality, which is fine. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that a little bit later on. But that's how it's looking so far. Now, the next thing I want you to do is click through these two tabs at the top. If you look at the materials tab, you should have the default base material on your font at the moment. There are options here though to apply other materials onto your font. So for example, the gold leaf fold, if I click on that, it'll take a moment just to render it, but you can see it gets this gold leaf effect onto it. You can play around with some other ones if you want, just to see what it does. Uh, it generally takes a couple of seconds to render it, and then it will change. Okay, but for 
today's tutorial sake, we are going to stick with this base material. So just get it back to that look. And the final step over in lighting, just scroll down and turn the shadows on. Just click that little button to turn them on. You can see the shadows appear behind your text. Now an issue I've got is with the letter S. You can see that the shadow is getting cut off by the bounding box. So what you need to do, still in this lighting section, is go right to the bottom where it's got shadow bounds and just increase the bounds of the shadow. So I'm going to get up around 70 to 80 percent and you'll see that my S shadow now looks a lot better. All right, to finalize things here, all we need to do is click this button up here that will render with ray tracing. When you click it, your computer may freeze for a moment while it does its rendering. So that's just applying the effect to a higher standard and you can see that that looks really cool now. So you can close your 3D and materials panel for the time being and click off your font. And there you go, you've got your inflated balloon text effect. Now I wanted to do that a second time uh, with the word skies. So I'm just going to write the word skies, change my color to maybe bright pink. Remember we're looking for fun colors for balloons, nothing boring. If you wanted to, you could even change um, each of these colors. I might even throw in different colored balloons. Now that light blue is going to go. I want to steer clear of that. Go with an orange. Purple. All right, so there we go. We've got five different colors, and we're just going to go through that same process. So if you just go back to, go back to effect and choose 3D materials and inflate. Okay, we've inflated that text. We'll now go over to lighting and turn on the shadows, and if need be, turn up the shadow bounds because my S shadow is getting cut. That's why I'm going to turn that up. And click on this render button up here so it just renders it with the higher quality text effect and we are done and so to finish off with now what I'm going to get you to do just so we can move this text around easier as you can see when I move it now it just has to render each time I move it what I'm going to get you to do to avoid that is simply go up to object and expand the appearance of the font and now you'll be able to pick it up and just move it about without that lag. Just make sure you have finished applying any final changes before you expand that appearance. Alright, so you can save it up now and you are all finished.